Let's take a look at how our rib cage impacts the health of the knee joint. So here I have a plumb bob and I will align the string of the plumb bob with the front of my hip joint. More or less like that and see what happens with the plumb bob relative to the floor and relative to my foot, my weight-bearing surface. Now, look, when I shorten the right side of my rib cage, typically what corresponds with this kind of shortness of the right side of the ribs is translation of the pelvis to the left. And with it, can you see where the plumb bob is and where the foot is. This is a classic predisposition for knee valgus or K leg or X leg where the knee joint is more to the midline relatively to the foot. See, here's my hip joint, here's my knee and here's my foot. If I were to line up with my kneecap, with my patella, still there will be no foot underneath. This is a dangerous position for the knee. For me to jump now, get up from a chair in position like this, this is a weakened position for the knee. Ideally, our skeleton cancels gravity, meaning the bones are aligned in such a way that they are responsible for canceling gravity and us standing, sitting beautifully upright. And therefore, when clients come to us with problems like knees, we look of course, locally, we check how the knee is functioning, how the strength of the quadricep, hamstring flexibility, range of motion of, of the joint is, but we need to look through the entire kinetic chain for the clues where the joint can become more healthy. And very often, it can be in remote places like the rib cage. And that's why I would like to invite you to our workshop called United Ribs. More information in the link below. Here's a short practice to help you free up your rib cage and restore full length. Sit on the front edge of the seat or a stool, place your right hand on top of your head with the elbow out to the side and very gently tilt your head to the right and then come back. We'll do only four movements, so listen to the quality of sensation of bending your right ribs, expansion of the left rib cage, compression of the right rib cage, exhale as you tilt, inhale as you come back. Don't be interested in the full range of motion or any sort of stretching. Let go of it. Start at the middle ranges of movement and observe where you bend and the overall quality. Make it smoother. One more time. Bend. Return. Make the movement smooth. Put your hand back on your lap. Relax for a moment. preferably with your eyes closed, sensing the after effect of movement in your body, in your ribs, 
in your back. Second movement, lift your right seat bone, your ischium, off the stool, off the chair, and then let it return back. To do so, you may want to push with your right foot into the floor. Observe your spine is bending to the right. Of course, you could do this movement like Tower of Pisa, all leaning to the side, but allow flexibility in your chest, in your spine, and then return. Feel this movement is not coincidental. It speaks to our first movement. You lift your right hip and feel your right ribs come together, left ribs open apart, and then come back. Let's do it a couple more times. Exhale, raise your hip, Feel your head wants to tilt to the right. Return. Form a body image picture of your entire spine. Bending to the right. Coming back. Returning the right seat bone onto the ground, which is a recipe for, for tall right side, for good skeletal support, that contact of the right seat bone with the floor. Rest again. Close your eyes. Feel after effects of movement. Place your right hand on top of your head and do the original movement of bending to the right, returning back to upright position. You might find that even after this very short practice, the movement is already a little bit better. Observe the process of bending and the process of straightening. You will feel restoration of the length of the right side of your back as you return from the compressed state of bending to the right. Wonderful. Place your hands down on your lap. Rest for a few seconds. Breathe. Giving time for this process. It cannot be successful when movements are abrupt, when you're rushed, when you're forceful. Now let's combine both movements. Place your right hand on your top of the head. As you bending your head, your right elbow to the right, raise your right seat bone. Come back to starting neutral position. Exhale, feel the arc that your right elbow makes to the side and down, returning back to upright. Let's do it one more time. Exhale, lift your right hip, your seat bone, bend, return back, to upright, feeling, becoming aware 
of what upright feels like and do the same movements on the opposite side. One thing that you want to be mindful of is that you're sitting upright and movements are on frontal plane, meaning like the plane on the wall behind me. So, for example, if you look at side view, watch if I keep my elbow, my head and the movement in the lateral configuration on the frontal plane versus me collapsing a little bit and feel that this movement will lose its frontal plane. I'm starting to twist, I'm starting to bend forward. It's hard to keep frontal plane and even if you manage to keep the frontal plane, since the head is so far in front of my back, the lateral movement of the head will happen on, in the neck, but not necessarily in the back, because it's completely different plane. Comparing to, if I come to upright position, and then my head, my shoulders, my rib cage, and the pelvis are more or less on the same plane and the movement becomes so much easier and much more distributed through larger area of my skeleton. I hope that helps. Happy practice. Thank you very much.